This is part two of a series where I take you on an historical journey to piece together the structure of benzene. You might want to watch part one first, but it's not strictly necessary. Your goal is to piece together the structure of benzene as early as you possibly can. When we left off, I had given you several proposed structures of benzene, but they were all wrong. All of these were inconsistent with observations that we had made about benzene in at least one way, so the controversy is ongoing. The year is 1901, and the French chemist Paul Sabatier found that benzene can undergo hydrogenation under extreme catalyzed conditions. In other words, he took benzene and added hydrogen, and nothing happened. He added some nickel into the mix, because nickel oftentimes catalyzes hydrogenation reactions for other compounds, but still nothing happened. He then started increasing the temperature and pressure. He found that if he had a temperature of 150 to 250 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 25 atmospheres, in other words, 25 times higher than the average pressure at sea level on Earth, this reaction could happen. He could add hydrogen onto benzene. The product he obtained was cyclohexane. Cyclohexane has six carbons in a ring, all single bonded to each other. So what we can conclude from this is that benzene is a six-membered ring. Benzene has six carbons in a ring. Let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video. It's me. I'm the sponsor of today's video. Did you think I had a real sponsor? No. I am trying to teach chemistry to people who want the help, so if you'd like to help me on my journey, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share my videos with people who you think might like them. It's now the 1930s, and Dorothy Crowfoot Hodgkin is pioneering X-ray crystallography. Between 1937 and 1969, Hodgkin determined structures for cholesterol, penicillin, vitamin B12, and insulin. But right now, we are before that happens. X-ray and electron diffraction are being used to study the structure of benzene. And we figure out two very important things. Benzene is planar. All six carbon-carbon bonds have a length of 1.39 angstroms. This is mind-blowing. Let's take a look at a molecular model of Kekulé's proposed structure to see why. So you have six carbons in a ring, alternating single and double bonds. This is a planar molecule. If I tip it up on its side, you can see that the molecule is flat. If it's down on the table, all 12 atoms can touch the table at the same time. This is a planar molecule. However, there's a problem with this. The single bonds are longer than the double bonds. Let's look at just single and double bonds by themselves. So in molecules that we know for sure have a carbon-carbon single bond, we can measure the bond length to be 1.54 angstroms. And when we have a carbon-carbon double bond, we can measure the bond length to be 1.33 angstroms. Now, all of the carbon-carbon bonds in benzene are the same length, and it's neither of these two lengths. It is somewhere in between. Another thing that's important to know, we are not seeing a rapid exchange between two different Kekulé structures. These bond lengths are not changing back and forth between 1.54 and 1.33 angstroms. They are all stable. They are all consistently 1.39 angstroms. If these carbon-carbon bonds all have the same length, then they all have to have the same number of electrons. One way this could be true is if these were all one and a half bonds, but that doesn't make sense. One and a half bonds would each have three electrons. That's an odd number. There would have to be an unpaired electron in each bond. Unpaired electrons are called free radicals, and they are very reactive, meaning they are very unstable. Benzene is uniquely stable. We were sure of that pre-1865 at the start of this journey. What we're left with is delocalized electrons. The structure of benzene only makes sense if the six pi electrons are not shared between any two carbons, but are delocalized around the ring. These six electrons are shared by all six carbons. 
And this is how the structure of benzene is normally drawn, with a circle in the center representing those 60 localized electrons. My next video is about a strange dream that Kekulé supposedly had, and it does a really great job of explaining what delocalized electrons are. Thanks for watching Chemistry in a Nutshell. If you feel that I've earned it, please like this video and subscribe to my channel.